Are you ready to increase your retention and revenue and convert website traffic to clients? Then you're ready for Maya. Maya is a marketing and client recruitment software. Maya creates better business relationships by pairing the right clients with the right beauty professionals. How do we do it? The matchmaker. Your brand will have its own unique matchmaking survey. By pairing people based on their skill set, budget, personality, and lifestyle preferences, Maya creates lasting relationships that keep both sides coming back for more. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Pair the right clients with the right beauty pros the first time. Visit joinmaya.com to get started. Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Today we're talking about building a culture with a diverse team. I'm super excited. We have first-time guest and award-winning salon owner. We have Andy Winsor here, all the way from the state of Wisconsin, uh, Washington, not Wisconsin. That's where I am. Andy is in Washington and super excited to be here to share why she's award-winning, what makes her brand special and unique. And let me just tell you a bit about this amazing woman. First off, if you're listening to today's conversation, I would love for you to watch our episodes on YouTube where you can actually see the faces behind the names, which is really fun. So go to our Beyond the Technique YouTube channel. You can find the link in our show notes and go ahead and watch today's show. Um, Listening is wonderful as well. But let me just tell you, Andy is an industry pro who has been a part of the industry for 35 years. She started her amazing Studio 16 Salon Spa back in 2003. This month, they are actually celebrating, actually, I should say last month, they're actually celebrating their 21st anniversary. So amazing. She has been through a lot of tests and trials throughout the many years, has done and tried many, many things and is still continuously working on her business to always make it better and better. I'm super excited that she's here today. So without further ado, help me welcome Andy. Welcome to Beyond the Technique. Well, thanks, Katie. Thanks for having me here. I'm super excited. I'm excited too. And and you have been in the industry for some time. You've seen a few things. You've tried a few things. I'd love to go all the way back to the beginning for you. And what made you decide to get into the beauty industry to begin with? Oh, you guys, that's a funny story um, because it was not about doing hair. Um, I ended up going to beauty school because it got me out of high school for half a day. Um, I was not the premier student. Um, I had no idea where I was going with my life. Um, Immigrant parents, we came to the States in the early 60s. Um, So my parents just worked, worked, worked. And I was like, I don't want to work. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to do any of this. So my best friend said, let's go to beauty school. We can go half days. And uh, they probably won't even check to see if we're there. So uh, signed up. My parents were like, this is great. We, we won't have to pay to send you to college. Well, you'll be a hairdresser. Um, and lo and behold, I actually was pretty good and enjoyed it. So it kind of came, kind of came, um, like I said, un- unannounced. I was not aware that it was going to be fun. And I loved the people part of it. I loved the, the creativity, the freedom. Um, and so, yeah, so I went to work right away. Um, started in just a little chain salon that was quantity over quality and realized really quickly that that was, that was not for me. And just kind of started my journey that way. Um, Worked for my very best friend's sister um, who kind of mentored me. Uh, She had some amazing stylists on her team. And it was great learning from, you know, not necessarily industry leaders, but industry leaders in my own area. They were experienced and and, uh, doing some really great things. And this was all before social media or any even internet. Right. So I didn't know how fabulous the industry really was until, uh, you know, until you learn it. So it was really great. It was a great experience. Um, So I'm I'm happy to say that I've only quit one one salon job, Um, moved with uh, 
woman that was kind of mentoring me. And then she sold the salon to me and a friend. And then I bought a friend out. And now here we are 21 years later. Oh, interesting. I was going to ask what made you decide to be a salon owner. So somebody presented you with this opportunity. Where was your head at at that time? Oh, you know, my head was in a place where I think many of us go when we're um, working, working, working really hard for somebody. And we don't think that we're getting our slice of the pie. Um, So I jumped into salon ownership thinking that the grass was greener on the other side. And I rapidly learned that I got to water the grass and I got to weed it and I got to keep it green um, because that's the only way that it's going to be greener than the other side. Um, So I've been doing a lot of yard work (laughs) to put it, to put it bluntly um, over the last 20 plus years. Um, So it was just kind of an opportunity that presented itself. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And, and then I was like, Oh, this is not as easy as it looks. So, well, and even in 2003, things were wildly different, even from a social media perspective, than they are today. Oh, yeah. So, at the absolutely very for you, what do you, what do you feel were some of the things you did really well that got you, you know, this continuous success? I think just the openness and willingness to try different things, um, not necessarily listening to what everybody was telling you to do but doing kind of what was in your gut that made you decide like no i'm going to try it this way because it's not working this way um and without a you know no business background no no numbers background none of that um happened until that actually didn't even come around until 2008 when i actually started paying attention to numbers and kpis and things like that so that that even took a while well, interesting timing because of the recession. It might have been right, like, right. It might have been a blessing, have in, a, a blessing <laughs> in disguise, probably. So that, yeah, that's okay. tell us yeah. about your you know team size today and location, a square footage, and just a bit about the logistics of your business. Currently, we are uh, just under three thousand square feet. We've got eight stations. I've got seven staff. Um, we have two treatment rooms. No esthetician at this, this time, but we're kind of revamping that department seems to be a a challenge. It's challenging when you are really, really focused in one area to spread that out. But I think we just brought on a really great uh, team member that is going to help us bring that spa back to life. Um, And, and I, you know, spa is kind of loosely loose term because it's, we mainly do skincare and waxing. So yeah, not a day spa, but, um, I do have, I do have a vision in mind because we have a beautiful, we're in a beautiful location um, that has a lot of opportunities for some more growth. So that's kind of, that's kind of where we are right now. Well, a great leadership starts with a visionary. So I think that's incredible um, to continue to see what the future could be, even though you've been in it now running it for 21 years. I think that's really powerful. And I know a big focus for you has really been, and by by the way, you were recognized for being a top 200 salon. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thank Um, you. Specifically for environmental sustainability, which I think is wonderful. And yet you are also very, very focused on taking your very diverse team and how do you cultivate this positive environment, have an amazing culture, even though, again, diversity means people think different are different like tell us a bit about that and why that's an important area for you to focus on well I think the the things that we tend to focus on um, you know we we work really hard in the in the beginning through the interview process to make sure that even though we are bringing in people diverse diversity is huge for us Um, we live in a very conservative area and I want to like expand and show the people that there's all kinds of us out here. Um, but at the core, it's really about taking care of what, we, what we're doing, right? We're um, taking care of our planet and our people, two things that aren't going anywhere. If we don't, but if we don't take care of them, they're gonna go away. So um, taking care of my team from a, um, a holistic standpoint, like 
mental health days and awareness in their everybody's got something going on these days nobody nobody is living this picture perfect life anymore um, recognizing that individuals have needs and we all want to be recognized we all want to be heard so we work really hard within our culture to create that type of environment um, the girls tend to be really excited um, about they'll see something on TikTok and they're like, hey, did you see this? And I'm like, oh God, TikTok, come on. And they're like, next thing you know, we've got, we're doing clothing exchanges because they're like, you guys don't realize like the clothing industry is terrible. Like the waste. And so now we do regular clothing exchanges. Um, just, we grow our own herbs for our spa water. Um, and wow. you know, just things like that. We're part of green circles, so we recycle everything. And I'm just always inspired by, you know, our Slack group. Somebody will post something and they're like, hey, I just saw this, we should try this. Um, you know, during COVID, of course, we had to do all um, throw away utensils and cups. And of course we are finally got through all of those because we buy too many. Um, so everybody's like, oh my God, we got our coffee mugs are back. The glasses are back. Everything's coming back. It's starting to look more like it's supposed to. Um, and, you know, they, you know, we started out with dress code and we've managed to, to bring that down a little bit. We all still want to look professional and, and like we're part of the team. Um, but not everybody wants to wear the same thing every day. So we've just really tried to um, bring together everybody's ideas and they all know that like they can put their ideas in the bucket and they may not all end up part of the, the protocols or the systems or the processes um but they do appreciate the fact that it gets heard yeah absolutely so. i think that's so important I'm, I'm really curious about your mental health days is this a specific time off program um, it's just something that we recognize that, um, you know, we have, um, they have sick days that they're allotted. Um, and part of that is just, you know, if, just because you're having a bad day, like we've got protocols, right? Like maybe you just need to take the first half hour of the day and go, you know, go get a coffee and go for a walk and, and just chill. Um, so we're really, we try to be really open with that as far as, like you have this many days throughout the year that you can use for, I just need a day. I just need a day. Cause I think that's super important these days. Um, staff or everybody is being pulled in so many different directions. Um, and so we definitely find that that's super helpful and um, the team really appreciates it. I love that. And, and you know, a little bit ago, you kind of just gave us a little peek to potential vision you have for the future of your company, but if you're willing to share, what kind of objectives or goals do you have kind of set before you yet for this year for your business? This year, we're, this year our focus is really on um, obviously cultivating our culture and just really uh, keeping that first and foremost. Retention has been a big thing. We're seeing a lot of um, in our area anyway, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, so solopreneurs, people stepping out on their own. So we're trying to, we're trying to stop that, you know, not necessarily, I don't want to say stop that from happening, but we don't want to see our own teams taking off and doing their own. So just kind of creating a, a culture that way, um, along with guest retention. I think that's been a hard one. Um, the, the, the looming recession and people being a little bit more cautious with how they're spending their money and where they're spending their money. And you talked about it um, at Data Driven, right? It's like the perceived value, right? Nobody want, nobody expects a McDonald's hamburger at a five-star restaurant. Um, so they're going to pay for it. They will pay for it. We just have to really make sure that we're focusing on that. Um, so part of our I guess, goals for 2024 is just to really hone in on those. Uh, we're not taking on, we're taking on a little bit of boutique. We've been kind of putting our toes in the water with uh, adding boutique items so that we have a little bit more to offer clients when they do come in. Um, but the big part is just 
we're just trying to refine our systems this year and kind of see what the year is going to bring. Yeah, I think it's so smart uh, thinking about how we, we talk about the diverse aspect of your team and culture, but also diversifying the ways that you make money at your business. So mm-hmm. I love that you've added that boutique element. Um, and I think retention is huge. And it's funny that you brought up people don't want, you know, a burger at a five star restaurant. But if we all think about, oh, I opened my, you know, more expensive toothpaste that I prefer because it's the best, but then you paid the same and it's now only 2.5 ounces. It used to be four. Yeah. And like, so consumers are just getting a little bit irritated, right? So we do have like, a bigger responsibility to knock it out of the way with your visit. So with your, with your company and team, what do you feel like you've kind of up the ante on when it comes to the personalization of your guest experience? Oh, I feel like we're trying to add something or take something away all the time. Um, we recently went back to this really more detailed consultations. Mm. Um, it's been really easy to kind of like rest on your laurels with consultation, right? So um, we've been building in a couple of extra minutes with appointments so that team is having time to like sit face to face with the client and talk to them and figure out what is it that you want today? Um, and how can we get you there? And just being a little, you know, trying to be more transparent because I think that that's something that, you know, you just, you start strumming along and things are going well. And then you're like, hmm, little, you get little red flags that say, well, this needs a little updating. This needs a little, this needs a little work. Um, so we've been uh, really working on the consultation and the girls have, are finding that, um, you know, we kind of went back to pulling the tablet out, asking the questions, um, marking it in their files. And at the end of the day, they're all like, this is really, this is way better, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's way better. And, you know, you start that way and then you back off a little bit and then you got to get back in that. So I think that's probably one area that we've really focused on. Which I think is so smart because we've learned the majority of consumers do not believe they've had consultations when they go to salons mm-hmm. or spas. And majority of salons and spas would say, we do consultations. Do consultations. Every visit. So the right. disconnect is we tend not to say, I, okay, let's sit down for your consultation before we begin. And so it's yeah. just that quick little addition to think about like, yeah. oh, consultations, that may not be the most innovative area to focus on personalization, but if we neglect the basics, yeah, that will not grow abundant fruit. So I actually think it's brilliant yeah. that that's the area of yeah. focus for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, you got to know the rules before you can break the rules. Um, so if you, if you, and if you, you know, every artist from before time, like. The basics are what get you here and the basics keep you here. However, if you just are doing basics, you won't go anywhere. Well, we know that you're not doing the basics at your company. And I want everybody to know if you're listening, we have the link in our show notes for you to check out Studio 16 Salon Spa's website and Instagram. As you can see, their beautiful work. Before we're done, Andy, personally, what are your ways of stretching yourself as a leader and just person in life? What are the things that you're personally working on? Oh, do you have, how much time do we have? No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I think, I think it's, this is an industry in which there's always room to grow. And then as a person, um, we're always trying to pivot and take on new things. And um, I think just personally, I, I want to spend more time coaching and mentoring. I'm kind of tired. Not that I'm tired of doing hair. I just don't want to do as much because I love those aha moments when I see their their lights come on. And, you know, this is my 35th year. I, I'm not going to be here forever. Somebody's going to have to roll in and, and take over at some point. And uh, so I just want to, like, continue to cultivate and and develop my own strong leaders so that they can they can be the future. Well, I think that's brilliant as well. And every time the leader gets better, everybody gets better. 
So yeah, I'd like to think that. so. Yeah. Um, oh, well, any final words of wisdom or encouragement for owners listening today? Maybe it's somebody who's just starting out. They think, wow, 35 years. It's like, you know, they could never imagine what, how much yeah. it's really going to, like, what do the next 35 years look like? But um, right. it feel overwhelming. But what would you just say to somebody listening today that is maybe a, more at the beginning of their journey? Um, I would find yourself a trusted mentor like somebody that you can um, reach out to because there are some dark days, right? Um, it's lonely at the top and um, you got to have somebody that you can, uh, that you respect, that you can reach out to, that even if they can't give you the answer, they can just like hold your hand and tell you it's going to be okay. Um, that the reward is, the reward is worth it. And, uh, you know, you just got to, stick with it and uh, don't give up. I love that. Stick with it and don't give up. Well, I really appreciate Andy that you joined me today for this Thank you. impromptu and a, you know, right. conversation. It's so no, much I fun. Love it. Um, and yeah, thank you again for being with me. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us here week after week at Beyond the Technique. If you appreciate this platform, we would be so grateful if you took a moment to leave us a positive review wherever you're listening so that more people like yourself will discover Beyond the Technique, where we're here to change the way that you are supported in your business. Until next time, everybody, have an awesome day and stay strong.